Welcome to the Law Codex podcast. In this episode, we'll speak with James and Jamie, a musical duo of cousins from Glasgow who released a new EP called Here to Stay. So thank you, James and Jamie, for joining us for this episode. Thanks very much for having us. How are you? All right? Yeah, doing well, doing well. Did you manage to have a, a good Christmas considering the situation? Aye, aye. Well, obviously, quite as, quite as is expected, but you have to stick with it, don't you? You have to stick with it. And you had obviously, you know, the big news that you've released your new EP. So how did that sort of feel that you managed, you know, after all the hard work to finally get it released and for people to hear it? It was, it was still good. It was obviously it took a wee bit longer than expected. Uh, recording studios and stuff like that. Sessions were all cancelled, so we had to sort of wait. Obviously, me and James just kept FaceTiming and stuff like that, uh, pinging back and forth ideas and stuff. But once once we sort of got the recording done, it was a lot easier because obviously you don't need to play gigs to release to release it sort of thing. So we just, once we got it recorded, we just sort of hung it on to Spotify and stuff like that and then let them do the rest of the work. Yeah, I, I suppose it's kind of, uh, and like, uh, the, the pandemic worked out well for us in a way because we didn't need to play as many gigs. So we could kind of focus on recording and writing more songs, um, which was obviously beneficial. But when it came down to recording itself, obviously, it kind of went in the back burner for a while and was delayed, obviously, because we couldn't get into the studio. But it worked out well in the end. Yeah, so do you play a lot of gigs then? And, you know, in Glasgow, obviously, uh, have you had a lot of opportunities to sort of play in front of people? Yeah, um, I would say before the pandemic, we were playing near enough every week. We'd actually run an open mic night um, for a year in one of our local pubs, which was a great experience. And uh, having that... Um, responsibility to play every week was great and obviously it got you used to playing different songs because you had to change what you were playing every single week but yeah we played a lot of places around Glasgow and some bands have been fortunate enough to support along the way which has been absolutely brilliant for us I think I think, think the last I think that last year there or before the pandemic was one of our biggest years for gigging and stuff like that because as James says we were then at least one or two gigs a week, and that was every single week that whole year. You know what I mean? Uh, so, that, so it was quite. Don't get me wrong. Before that, we did do a lot of gigs uh, all over the place, all over Glasgow and stuff like that. But the, the last year was was pretty good. We hit the ground running, sort of thing, and uh, played every single week almost. Yeah. So, so you, it seems like music's obviously a huge part of both your lives. But do you have sort of careers out with music, or do you both do music sort of as a full time, you know, job? Um, well, yeah, we, we both do. I'm a trainee solicitor um, at Burness Ball in Glasgow, which is obviously we've been working from home since March, but mm. that's a great firm to work for. And the, the people that I've been working with have been very supportive of my music, so that's been good. Uh, yeah, as James says, he's got a, a different career as well. So I'd, I've, I'm a gas and oil. I'm a gas heating and oil engineer, so... Obviously, the weeks that we're known call and stuff like that, that's the weekends that we're trying to ping back and forth ideas and squeeze a wee, squeeze a wee session into the studio and stuff like that. So, obviously, it's, it's a wee bit difficult when you've got different careers, but you kind of, a lot of the times you kind of just jump ship and start with music straight away, you know what I mean? You need to sort of get yourself on your feet as well, uh, work, work out a career path for yourself and then obviously focus on the music at the same time. Yeah, so it seems like you both obviously have different careers. Um, both seem quite sort of maybe stressful or, you know, quite intense. So do you find that music and, you know, creating music and playing in front of people, does that give you sort of like a release? Is that sort of like a... Oh, I definitely. I've always said to James, it sounds extremely cringy, but I'm a happy place when I'm sitting in the studio. Uh, you just seem as if you, you, you zone out for absolutely everything. It's, it's, it's no like... Don't don't we don't play we don't play live or play play in front of crowds for for like a buzz or for like people to, or a little bit like but if people cheer and stuff like that it's just when you, when we play music we just zone out sort of thing you know what I mean just just escape the world for a wee thirty minutes and then back to reality <laughs> yeah I would say so uh, I would say exactly what Jamie said it's my happy place music whenever I play it is my happy place it's such a great release for, for anything, really. And especially during this pandemic, it's been an absolute godsend, I think, for me. And Jamie will, would say the same, I think. Definitely. Playing music and while well, you're in lockdown or any of the restrictions, playing music just gives you that escape. And it, it's kept me connected um, with Jamie throughout 
the pandemic and playing gigs is amazing because you get a good reaction from the crowd. You play in front of different people and you meet different people all the time, which is great, is what I love in life, but recording is another uh, amazing thing to do. Uh, yeah. Recording's great. Recording's because it shows you, it gives you different ideas that you would never ever think of. See, see, if you, see if you go into the recording studio and have your heart set on playing a certain thing, it doesn't always necessarily turn out that way either. James will say, no, that's, try it that way, and I'll say, try it this way. And even the guy that does all the recording for us, he'll even ping an idea back and forth and it ends up the song might sound completely different. So it's good to go because you don't know what they're going to leave with. I mean, you can leave with a completely different item, so to speak, as a song. So the Here to Stay EP contains five tracks. So you've got All My Days. When you know, you know, I knew it from the start, eh? And I just can't help but let you know That I know exactly how this is gonna go Here to stay Girl, don't walk away I'm here to stay Maybe we can grow all together one day So girl, let's stay side by side Feel the rhythm of our hearts is so alive Fine you ask me why I'm laughing And I ask you the same Are you thinking what I'm thinking? You're all this in my brain Your eyes tell me Give it all go I've been letting you do you Whilst I've been trying to be me But it's very hard to do When I know I'm meant to be You know that I'll never give up trying No, that's not me lying I just wanna be your dream so and people always say People always say that the grass is always greener on the other side Baby come with me so we can see if it's the truth or if it's all a lie Oh my darling come with me so we can see how I like to... So for both of you, which track did you enjoy the most like recording and you know writing the lyrics for and you know the final product which are you most happy with? So I think James, James will start with you. Okay, um, well that's a good question. <laughs> a lot of people have asked me this, uh, and I would say, I would say I, I actually like them all because you'll hear in the EP that they're all different. So what they tried to do was the EP was intended to come out in the summer, and obviously because of the coronavirus restrictions, we couldn't bring it out in the summer. But we thought it was good to bring it out at the end of the year because it is quite upbeat and. Uh, it would hopefully give some people a lift before the end of the year. But I would say, recording-wise, anyway, my favourite song to record was People Always Say. And no. the reason for that is that the other songs me and Jamie had written together, practised, played, well, some of them would maybe played live, um, but People Always Say, we had lit literally just got it down on the paper. And then a few days later, we were recording it. Um, so we'd never played it live, never played it together in person. <laughs> Ask plenty of people what songs are favourite. Um, <laughs> just out of interest, but you always get a different answer. And it's, it's quite good to hear that because it means that all of the songs, people, well, people like different ones. So when you hear that, at least, Every, at least every song, somebody that I've spoke to, it's been their favourite. So that's really good to hear, I think, as well, because it shows that we made five different songs and um, we pleased a lot of people in doing that because they have different favourites. So it's I think you might... Oh, good. Sorry, you can... No, no. Yeah, I think you managed to make sort of five songs, which they're all, they're all sort of different in a sense, each has their own identity, but they all sort of have a common theme so it kind of works together uh, in an EP. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to sort of put me on the spot and ask what my favourite was. I'd probably have to, what was your favourite? Yeah, I'd probably have to say Here to Stay because I think it's it's a song you could put on the radio and it's quite an, you know, yes. quite a different song. You can get it on the radio for this then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, so um, in, in terms of actually um, making music and, and things like that, so do you have a record label uh, or do you sort of work independently and... and so no. what are your reasons yeah. for this? For the minute, for the minute we picked up the guitars for, for absolute day one, we've done absolutely everything off our own back. 
Uh, as I says before, we're not doing that blow rain trumpet, but we're just trying to show people that you, you, you could wait you could wait for years and 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 do a thousand tracks and and sit there and get yourself put down and stuff like that and think nobody wants to hear me, nobody wants to take his own. Because it's getting a, re- a record deal is basically trying to get a job. You know, trying to get a job that sells uh, pretty hard. So trying to get a record deal is, is pretty tricky. So what me and James says, we say stuff that we'll do it off our own back. Uh, we'll, we'll make what we can. If people like it, they like it. If they don't, then we'll just keep trying until until uh, people sort of like our sound. And so far, so good. I mean, as I say, as, as me and James were saying the other day, I think quite a lot of people saying to me that they can relate to the songs. I mean, we... we we would never try and write songs and EPs and go right. We'll try. We'll try and match it up with what people are writing about the new. Or try and match it up with what's happening in the new. We we are just writing for for personal experiences and for people to say to us already that uh, that they can relate to it is is, is quite good considering we've had no help. Absolutely, the only help we've ever had is the guy in the studio, and that's because he's recording the stuff for us. Yeah, and 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 I just need to add to that to give my wee shout out the. The recording studio is called Stell's Recording Studio, and uh, Eddie Boy, yeah, <laughs> and the producer is called Eddie, and he's absolutely brilliant. I've no, well, remember Eddie, the next session's free, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've, we've known him for years, and it's a great working relationship that me and Jamie and Eddie have together because. We're all yeah. really straightforward with each other, <laughs> and if an idea comes, up, straightforward maybe. Yeah, maybe a wee bit too straightforward, I but if, if there's an idea that comes across that maybe one of us doesn't like or somebody puts something in, you go, nah, like, Jamie's probably a wee bit more straightforward than I am. Uh, he'll go, no, nah, that's, that's rubbish. But <laughs> maybe, maybe try that. So it's good. It's good. And we can all tell uh, <laughs> what we think of different ideas just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you've so you've worked obviously worked together to produce this EP. Before that, you did a lot of work in uh, you know venues and play music live. So just to bring it back to the very beginning, how did you actually sort of come together in the first place and decide that you wanted to sort of have a duo and to make music together? Go on, James. Put me right in that. <laughs> so I'm I already put a balaclava on after this. <laughs> <laughs> so so. Um, Basically, what happened was, it, it was one Christmas, funny enough, 10 years ago. Uh, me and Jamie are cousins, by the way, so we've always been close growing up. Um, although we're cousins, I mean, it feels more like we're brothers. If our mums are sisters, <laughs> <laughs> if, if our mums are sisters and uh, our dads are best friends. So, um, so, yeah, we've always been really close. And basically, it was one Christmas, uh, I got Singstar <laughs> for Christmas, the, the Robbie Williams. I took a shot at it. So I'd been singing because my dad sings. Jamie's dad sings as well, but he was never really interested. So I'd been singing and you know, I'd be trying to hit the, the top score for everything. So me and Jamie were basically taking shots. Oh, and, I, and I was thinking to myself, yeah, he's, he's quite good. And then... Uh, so it's got to the, the bonus track and uh, that was one where you had to sing a duet and the duet had to be in harmony. This is true, by the way. He's not making this up. This is my face is scarlet. <laughs> that, that is true. So Robbie Williams uh, and Gary Barlow. Um, I, can't, I think the song's called Shame, but basically they wrote this song together when they kind of made back up being uh, friends and so we had to sing it and somebody had to harmonise so Jamie's like I'll give it a go so there's a bit in the song that goes words come easy and then so you have to harmonise it and, and Jamie did and I was like what? <laughs> that, that sounds good so that's basically how it began and not long after that um, we, we both get the same um, grandparents, obviously, and my granny and granddaddy, their golden wedding was coming up, and my granddad, he was really into Johnny Cash and country music, and he asked that me and Jamie play at his golden wedding, and that, I mean, 
So that's, they said, yeah. That's, that's when the ball crashed. Yeah. So, so Jamie was like, nah, I'm no, I'm no singing. So, so I sang, but that was the first time we'd ever played together. Um, and it was in front of, I mean, hundreds of people. The place was absolutely mobbed. So that was how it all began. And Do you want to get a hug for it? Yeah. Obviously, my dad and Jamie's dad are best friends, but they play music as well. So we've always kind of been inspired by them and listening to them sing because their voices kind of blend together. And uh, I think when I heard me and Jamie sing for the first time, it was the kind of same the same feeling that I got. And it just I just get an instant buzz from it. I don't know how Jamie felt, but I, I did. I get I get an instant buzz. I just what, 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 thought. That's a stoked farting. I get an instant buzz. From it. <laughs> I just, I just thought this is, uh, this is it. So you know, the, almost as soon as you sort of started together, you you had a, a wedding, and obviously very important to yourselves being you know part of your family. So how you know how did it feel to sort of play in front of hundreds of people at the very beginning? And you know, if you, if you do badly, then you kind of ruin the whole wedding. So all that pressure that sort of builds up. Exactly. Yeah, well, well, it was, it was worse because it was a it was a fiftieth year anniversary. A, a right. golden wedding. Um, so it was kind of more pressure because you go, well, wow, like, they're not going to have another uh, golden <laughs> wedding. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was pressure, but I'd say we knew everybody that was there. We even get my grand up to sing at one point, uh, but we knew everybody and they were so supportive. And, I mean, the, the reaction that we got was absolutely brilliant. And I think we I think we thought we were going on a world tour. We practiced for about eight months before that. <laughs> with the words and everything in front of us. <laughs> I put the words about a week before. I'm like, nah, James, you can buy our own. I'll play the bass. <laughs> yeah. So again, just to bring it bring it forward again to the EP, could you sort of just discuss, you know, the whole process from you know writing each song? You sort of said that they were some songs were written already, but could you just sort of touch on, you know? Do one of you, you know, prefer writing like a certain type of song? What was the sort of preference each have? And um, you know, when when you sort of record in the studio, how does that dynamic work? You know, playing out together. Well, a lot a lot of the time, I've I've I don't mean a bad habit, but I've got quite a bad habit. People people always say is, uh, how, how do you start writing a song, or how, like how do you start it? Do you start doing the verse, or do you do the music, or whatever? I've ten I've got a tendency to start playing like uh, I'll start maybe a wee rhythm or whatever in the guitar that I quite like. And for whatever reason, with myself, James is slightly different. He's a wee bit fancier than me, but uh, that's why I butted in first. Uh, but anyway, so I tend to have a, a habit, maybe it's a bad habit, a good habit, I don't know, but I sort of start with the, the chorus in a lot of songs. So I'll sort of find a melody or a wee tune or whatever that I quite like, and I'll put words to that and say to James, do you, what do you think of this? Do you like this? He'll either say aye or say no. If he says no, I try to prove him wrong. If he says aye, then I, I hand it to him to try and write the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. So you've got your EP now, and coronavirus has sort of thrown a spanner in the works, and you can't really do live shows in the same way that you would before. So obviously, you know, leaving coronavirus aside, what are your plans for the future? Do you have any... You know, EPs that you're working on at the moment or, you know, albums or any, you know, specific tracks? Do you have any live shows that you want to do? Any, you know, global tours, as you said, <laughs> you, you thought you were doing at the start? Just can, just continue to write, 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 and write. Me, me and James have got songs sitting here that we can, we've got enough to fill to, maybe three albums, but you need to you need to pick the songs that you like. So say, say we're talking like the EP that we just done there, I think we had Easy James 25, 30 songs. And th- 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 I'm not saying I'm not saying the rest of them are all crap or, or rubbish and stuff like that, but it's just whatever feels right at the time. And don't get me wrong, when we're, when we're going to, we're, we're not going to try and get all oh, right with an EP and try and fire an album straight away because that, that's just silly. Compared, consider we've no we've no played live in front of anybody for a wee while, so we'd like to do this, release a couple of singles in the way. Hopefully, we get we get back out after this pandemic's done and start playing some more shows, but. For us to know is just write, 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 write. As J- James taught me years ago, but James always done the songwriting away at the very beginning when we first started, and I never had a, a clue at all. But what was putting me off is I was trying to write songs at first and surprise James, but I was putting myself off because I thought it sounded sort of rubbish. But what James says to me was, when you start writing a song, you need to finish it. 
So you do, don't don't start writing a song and then and then just say, oh no, I don't like that. You need to finish it because because what you, what we tend to find is if we don't finish it, when we try to write a new song, the words to that sort of start creeping in, mm. and that starts getting. In. So once if, if you've wrote that and get it out of the way, and I start to write that again, James just goes, no, wait a minute, you've wrote that and that song, so you can't use that. So it starts to get better as he as James called it. You just need to sort of keep flushing the songs out of yourself. So yeah. I think I think the new we'll, we'll just well, James will tell you as well. We'll just keep trying writing and writing and writing and writing. But I, we, we, we laugh and joke about the global tours and all that. I okay, that would be an absolute dream today. But 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 what we would really love today, a, a dream to us genuinely. The new we would love to play the King Tuts. If we played the King Tuts, we'd be happy with that. More than happy. And just for anybody who doesn't know, uh, I, I I don't I don't really know what what's the sort of King Touch. What what do you mean? By that? King Touch is just basically sort of sort of the high end show that you can play for unsigned acts, if you know what I mean. Uh, you see you see uh, Louis Capaldi. You see him uh, in a video years and years ago, and he's laughing and joking. He said, "I love to play the King Touch. I, I, I'd, I'd have been happy playing the King Touch." And look at him now. Uh, we, we, we'd never try and dream and push a heater. I'll try and say I will do that one day, but but, but our main dream is to play the King Tuts. I think that's a really nice message to leave this podcast on. So thank you both. Thank you both for taking time out of your day. You know, an unusual topic for the Law Codex, but obviously, James, uh, you're, you're a solicitor, so you know you, you got a little bit of a legal sort of yeah, <laughs> touch. Yeah, yeah. So so thank you both for joining, and it's been it's been a you know lovely time speaking to you. Oh, listen, thanks very much for having us. Anything you want to chat, you can chat with us. You know that. Yeah, thanks very much. Here's your opportunity. Fantastic. Yeah. If we can do anything to help you out in the future, just let us know. And thanks again for the opportunity. It's been great.